Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Rule Well. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace and blessings to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. Um, I don't really know if this is quick or not, but we're just going to get straight to it. Now, you already see the caption. Now, if you've been watching uh, GMS and if you've been uh, in this troop for any period of time, you understand that the Moors uh, were so were Israelites, okay? Um, we as a people were scattered to the four corners of the earth, lost out on the promised land, okay? The covenant and all that stuff. Well, I'm sorry, not the covenant, but we were kicked out of the land because of disobedience. And you can find a glimpse of the behavior, just a small glimpse in Micah 2, but you must read the entirety of the book, especially in the Old Testament where it talks about, um, you know, the many different times that we went off and we were went into captivity under other nations. Now, a part of the prophecy was we would forget who we were, right? You went into Christianity under this, uh, by the edge of the sword. You went into Islam by the edge of the sword. Calling yourselves by other names such as Moor or such as the Spaniard or such as a uh, whatever it is, except for one, an Israelite, and two, whatever respective tribe you were from. Again, it was prophesied that we would lose our heritage. But the point of this video, that was just a quick uh, preface, but the, 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 the point of this video is really just to show that the Bible is not a book of fairy tales. Okay, these things, if you couple your research and line it up with the scriptures... Or, uh, first and foremost, you were given the spirit to do so. You were given the understanding. If you don't have it, pray for it. If you have an inkling to want to understand, hey, that's a good sign. Um, you can line these things up. This is a history book. This is a data book about the rise and fall and the rise of a people whom the Lord is chose to be the apple of his eye. Now, let's let this play. Um, actually... Before we get that, since I talked about uh, the apple of the eye, I want to get two scriptures. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to put it up in KJ. Uh huh. Hmm. Hold on, give me a second. Just a second, I'm getting it because I want I, mean, I want two of them. Um actually. We'll get Israel as the Lord's portion. So this is Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. Um, actually, I'm going to just go to it. And I'm gonna, I'll want i get one more. All right. So we'll start at 8. This is Deuteronomy 32, which we're going to spend some time in 32 because that's the song of Moses. Um, but here's verse 8. When the Most High... Dang it, ads coming up. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Jacob's name was later changed to Israel. All right. Um, you can find that. Let me just see. Let's see. Oh, let me go back to the other. Before, let me let me read the other one before we, we get that as well. But I want to, you know, uh, make sure I get all the scriptures I can. Okay, this is Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. 17 and 17. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Okay, 
Um, so when you Jacob's name, uh, I believe it's in Genesis closer to 40 something. Let's see. But he wrestled with the angel. All right, this is Genesis 32, okay? You can go to Genesis 32, verse four, uh, 28, all right? After he uh, wrestled with the angel. Um, uh, his name was, sorry, I'm reading something else. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And he was the progenitor of 12 tribes, okay? Now, again, back to my original point or the preface of this video. There are two main characters in this thing. You have Jacob and you have Esau. And uh, one, th this was a, a, I guess, a, a, a biblical struggle. So from the time they were born, right, it is two different nations, two different people in thy womb. So we'll get that too. But let me let me let this roll for a little bit because I have so many precepts. Now that you're just rolling in. I only wrote four down, but now more are coming in. So uh, let, let's get it. Guys, some of the documents showing the white races of Europe. And we can get a better perspective as to who the Moors were fighting. These are the albinos and the beasts of Europe. Now, I don't know why she um, said albino, but we're going to stick to the the actual points of um basically revelation 20 playing out on this uh right here as she's explaining on this video and the moors were fighting these people for hundreds of years prior to the so-called transatlantic slave trade and one interesting thing i wanted to show you is that when you look at these beasts and albinos and that's exactly what they are beast wild men wildlings and the only thing that has changed is that they've shaved and put on a suit and tie um before we go on let's get the definition of albino um before we get that let's get um Genesis 25 and 23 in the spirit of that eternal battle every reincarnation is Esau fighting Jacob at the at the end of the day the Lord has already written that this wildling will return to his proper place um, in the near future this is Genesis 25 23 and the Lord said unto her two nations the, and the Lord is talking to uh, 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 Sarah oh, I'm sorry uh, God God uh, the Lord is talking to uh, uh, Isaac's wife, not Sarah. That is um, Abraham's wife. The Lord is talking to Rebekah, Isaac's wife. Okay, Genesis 25, 23. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two manner of people, you see, shall be separated from thy bowels. And the other people shall be stronger and the one people shall be stronger than the other. And we know who's stronger than who. And the only reason why they were allowed to get up over us is because the Lord allowed it. And we'll get that in just a little bit. Deuteronomy 32. Around about the 29th through the 31st verse. Okay. Uh, they shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. So we, I, what I want to do is get the definition of manner. Okay. So we're going to go... And two manner, it says two nations, right? Two different nations. Manner of people. All right, so let's, let's see what it says here. Strong's H, 3816. Laom. Laom. All right, manner. A people, a nation. Okay, so it... The definition reads as a manner of people or manner of people. So basically, two separate nations. And how they have achieved what they've been able to achieve in just a few hundred years. Keeping in mind that they were 
considered wild men just a few hundred years ago. And they had no last names. Many of them didn't even have first names. And I All right. Hate to pause it right there, but let's go to Psalms 49. Uh, where we at? For the redemption of their souls is precious, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Okay, straight to the point, 49, Psalms 49 and 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever in their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Now, they take over established places. And you see they had no names. They had no last names. They took over those names of the, uh, of the melanated or the brown people that were all the copper colored people that were already there. And then next thing you know, so say um, our brother's last name was... Uh, um, do more or drew more or something like that and now they are king drew more the first and the second and then they have these fake idea uh, not idea they are these fake genealogies uh, up until today and then they conquer these lands fast forwarding a little bit to the future with the uh names that they've already stolen or you know, let me not go too. Let's let's not go too deep into it because I I, I can. We're gonna get off the point. We're gonna get off the subject. I'm kind of pressed for time, so um, uh, let's let this one roll. I wanted to show you this because I found this very interesting. If you see here the wild men, and you look at the clothing that the people are wearing to the left, you can see here they're wearing this clothing to cover up their hairy bodies. So I found that very interesting. And something else I found in the British Library was one of the oldest genealogy charts, one of the first ones made for white people. And as you can see at the bottom of that genealogy chart, you see two wild men. So they're showing that their ancestry comes from the caveman. Right, so seer is their portion. Um, let's go to Genesis 36. I'm going to read it out. Gen 36. All right, so if you look up what Mount Seir looked like, <clears throat> it makes a little more scent. Scent. <laughs> it makes a little more sense as to why they build these skyscrapers now even to this day to this day they build these skyscrapers and these very tall buildings to symbol how they were in the caves and the clefts of the rock uh genesis 36 and 8 and man now we got to get that too um straight to the point okay thus dwelt esau in mount seir esau is edom uh, so we'll get that, and then uh, thou dwellest in the cliffs of the rock. Dwellest. I need that before we go on. Oh, duh, Obadiah. So let's go to Obadiah. Straight to the act. Mm, we may need to get a. We may need to read a little bit farther in. So let's go to. Oh, we'll go to the full chapter. All right. So this is the uh, verse one, vision of Obadiah. Obadiah, thus saith Yahweh, power concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from. The Most High, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. And they will return back to that small state. They are currently being humbled and 
return to that small state. They are currently being exposed and their skirt is being lifted. We're watching it in real time. Um, among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. And that goes twofold. Uh, let me finish it. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So not only uh, are you in the mountains high up, but you think a little bit more or a lot a bit more highly of yourself than you, than you ought to because you are simply a wildling. You should not rule anything. You should not lead anything. As Job said, I wouldn't even want you near my dog. So that should give you something to think about, considering that just a few hundred years later, today, we have people like the Queen of England, who claim to be of the royal bloodline of Egyptians and Cushites, who ruled the earth. Okay, so he's probably on the uh, African tip or whatever. But eat the meat, spit out the bones. We understand that this is between Esau and Jacob, not Ham. Ham is nowhere in prophecy to be in constant battle. There are two main, there are two characters. The protagonist is Jacob, the sons of Jacob. The antagonist is Esau, Edom, so-called white man. Sons of Jacob are the uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Um, I only have a, two more scriptures to get, so we need Revelation 20 and we need um, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 32. This is the Song of Moses. I'll let it play out while I grab it. They even found the remains of a boy who was buried at Stonehenge in Europe. He was buried in Europe, but he actually came from the Mediterranean Sea in Africa. And he came to Europe 3,500 years ago. So that's in 1500 BC. So we're told that the Moors arrived in Europe in 700 AD. But here we have black people out of Africa coming to Europe over 2,000 years before the Moors arrived in 700 AD. Just want to right, so you get that we were scattered across the four corners, um, especially as a heavy concentration of our people in the continent of Africa spreading around. That is the point of being spread throughout the four corners of the earth. Deuteronomy 32 and 32. Uh, no, 30, right? Because how did these people get up above us, right? These nameless beasts who uh, dwell in the dust, which means, or, or as and the dust being a parable of no or low understanding. How did they do it, right? Deuteronomy 32 and 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight? Except their rock, and that is, our rock is Yahweh, why Yahweh shy, unless he sold us, unless their rock had sold them, and Yahweh had shut them up. The only way, the only reason they got up above us was because of prophecy being fulfilled, and the Lord had sold us into the hands of these, whatever they are, <laughs> these brute beasts. And then we'll get Revelation 20, and that will be the end. All right. So, after the fall of Rome, around 300-something, 325 maybe, uh, this is where we're kicking off on verse 3. All right, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. And that seal is why they were dwelling in the caves, being sister fisters and, and uh, you know, doing all the things that they uh, enjoy doing to this day or, and, and are known for. <laughs> Let me start it <laughs> I'm going to start it too. All right. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him, thou bound him a thousand years. And remember, Rome, the Roman Empire fell around, you know, 300, 3-something three uh, AD and cast him into the bottomless pit 
All right, the the mountains in Europe. Probably I don't know volcanic rock where things can't grow. Uh, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. This video is showing him being loosed. And that was the beginning of his little season. So he got up above us because the Lord allowed it. And then you have the images that were painted over. And now uh, at this very day, you have these so-called white people thinking that they have ancestry in Europe and that they were the Vikings and that they were anything of note. But you weren't. You weren't even there. So if you look up when the Moors, uh, I guess, lost control of Spain, it was around about the time that, uh, you know, 1492, Great Divide Columbus, the Ocean Blue, right? Around about that same time. Marching in the slave trade, and now you had it was um, going both ways. So it's funny that the, the Moors lost control of Spain, and now Spain was the reverse slave capital. Seville, Spain was the reverse slave capital. So they were taking Northern Kingdom from uh 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 here you know what is now babylon or what will be called arsareth in the in apocrypha they were taken from the northern kingdom and bringing them to spain and of course through the west western horn of africa and then they were bringing the southern kingdom over to what is now babylon and if you fast forward today that is why it says judah and israel would be oppressed together but in the land of their captivity they shall remember themselves and now we are remembering ourselves. So here he is in this tick, this uh, video. It's showing the beginning of his little season. And the way you read Revelation 20 is you go 1 through 3 and then you skip to 7 because 4 through 6 is the future. But Christians like to say that that's a thousand year reign. And then Satan will get up above again, and uh, that's a thousand-year tribute. Some weird, bugged-out dogma, okay? But the proper way to read it, one through three, it's kind of like a time skip. They're going back. He's telling a story, but going back and forth. And that is why <clears throat> he's bound in verse three, um, in verse two, and then he's... Uh, Verse 7, it says, it goes into when the thousand years are being expired. All right, so let's read that, 20 and 7. And when the thousand years are expired, he shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go and deceive the nations which are about the four quarters of the earth. Yeah. So, from the time of the fall of Rome till around about the time, um, this whole thing, this whole slave trade kicked off and how... The wildlings got up above the Israelites, who were the Moors, in Europe, is roughly a thousand years. Do you get it now? Do you see it now? So this Bible, and that is why I prefaced, I gave an introduction about this Bible being a history book, a, a, a heavily abridged history book. And simultaneously, it being um, divine instruction on how those who were given the covenant, how we're supposed to live. So I pray that you were edified. With that being said, Shalom.